okay, I know what you're thinking. I am in the wrong presentation. So your booklet said HSPC, it actually says logical health. Uh, HSPC just rebranded. So now HSPC is known as logical health and it just happened. So I just literally changed the slides last night with the new logo. But it's the same, the same sandbox that HSPC used to have. Um, I'm Nikolai Schwertner. I, I was lead engineer on Smart on Fire. And then I started a company called Medaptech, where we developed medical applications based on Smart on Fire technology. And then the company merged. And now I work for a company called Interopian. I'm the chief innovation officer of Interopian. Um, and it will be my pleasure to talk to you about logical health today. How many of you are familiar with um, HSPC slash Logica? Okay, that's a good about half of the audience. All right, so I'll give you the 101 on, um, on Logica. I need to keep saying Logica. HSPC is the first thing which comes to mind, but so, all right. So what are we are going to cover today? So this is part one of two sessions. So the first session is going to give you an overview of Logica Health. Um, also some of the developer resources and services that are available to you uh, from Logica. Um, we'll show you the, uh, the Fire Sandbox, which I assume you, you folks are here for. So I'll give you the, the walkthrough of the Sandbox, show you the main features and how to use those. And in the second session, after, right after this session, we're going to go um, hands down into writing a simple Smart on Fire application. So we're going to, and then we're going to run the application, we're going to deploy it against our sandbox, and we're going to see that it works or maybe doesn't work. We, we shall see. Um, okay, so Logica Health is a consortium. So it's a consortium between Intermountain Healthcare, Louisiana State University Health, Veterans Administration. Uh, Veterans Administration is, uh, is uh, insurance for military personnel in the United States, so veterans. Uh, it's a big healthcare system. They run a system, a network of uh, hospitals. And uh, a number of associate, a growing number of associate members, uh, American College of uh, obstetrician gynecologists, all scripts, a session, Cerner Cognitive Medical, JCS, Ocera, PCP, UCSF, and Walter Coover. The mission of HSPC, uh, Logica Health, excuse me, um, <laughs> is to improve the health by creating vibrant, open ecosystem of interchangeable platforms, application, and knowledge assets. So it's a consortium which basically uh, collects the best of the standards, explores the standards, enhances the standards, and brings them together in a package which is actionable from developers um, and is ready to be deployed in the real world. Um, so Logica is a provider-led organization. Uh, it accelerates the delivery of innovation uh, in the healthcare and uh, aims to help improve um, the health of patients and the performance of the healthcare system. Um, the goals of Logica, so sharing of knowledge, knowledge sharing across, uh, across healthcare, um, clinical decisions and processes, vendor neutral, providing a vendor neutral marketplace, uh, which is to distinguish it from, from vendor marketplaces, so the marketplaces of Epic, Cerner, all scripts and such. So Logica uh, is working on providing a vendor neutral marketplace. Um, where people can deploy, the, uh, share their applications and then find other applications and from there deploy them across the healthcare system. Um, also Logica has a group um, which is working on standards. So uh, developing uh, models and terminologies for healthcare and also collecting models which are in existence and testing them uh, to, to work towards better semantic interoperability and and models, uh, profiles are super important for semantic interoperability. Um, and finally, Logica supports conformance and certification testing as well. So this program, the certification testing is still, it, it's in infancy, but the vision is that one day there will be um, an institution or a consortium which helps you get your application certified uh, to the degree that then this certif certificate can be acceptable to the different vendors and nobody's going to question uh, the qualities of your application and then need to retest it and maybe pay money and wait six months, one year, who knows, for 
vendor A, B, and C to be testing your application. But that's still a work in progress, this one. The Logica Developers Program uh, is there to help you build amazing applications. And it has a collection of tools to help you um, in, your, in your mission. How many of you are engineers, by the way, and developers, maybe? Okay, fantastic. That's the, va the vast majority of the room here. Wonderful, so I'm talking to the right crowd. Okay, so what do you get under, ooh, HSPC again, the Logica Developers, um, developers Portal. So we have a portal, developershspcconsortium.org. Um, so it will contain resources such as client libraries, tutorials, um, examples to help you get started in developing um, tools and applications for healthcare. Also, Logica provides a sandbox, um, which is your personal instance of uh, a fire, a, fi a fire sandbox, with, which supports also Smart on Fire in the cloud. Um, and finally, there is the Logica Gallery, which is uh, sort of the marketplace where you can publish your application. So learn, develop, and share. All these tools are provided by Logica. And here I'll do a quick detour to show you um, the portal. So the portal is under developers.hspcconsortium.org. This domain has not been updated yet, but it will soon redirect to the, to the new domain. Um, so this is the portal. Here is where you can find the gallery, tools to, for developers, uh, client libraries, tutorials, uh, etc. It's, it's all under the, under the hood right here. Okay. And back to the presentation. Okay, so the Logica Sandbox platform. Um, it's a free fire server which supports DSTU2, STU3, and um, R4 at the moment. But as, as soon as new versions of fire um, get balloted, those get added pretty much almost immediately to the, to the sandbox. Um, it contains tools and uh, simulators as well to help you build and test and manage your sandbox and configure it and uh, add CDS hooks. You see it's a Swiss army knife of things that will help you uh, with the sandbox. And also it's a collaborative environment where you can share the work that you're doing with your collaborators. You can invite folks and you can collaborate over your project and all of this for free. Um, paid by, by the VA and Intermountain Healthcare and Louisiana State University and the other benefactors. Okay, for those of you who like architecture diagrams, here is a quick diagram, architecture diagram of the sandbox. So without diving into too many details here, suffice to say, um, under the hood of the, H the Logica Health platform, you can we can spin up sandboxes and any number of those that you like for free at the moment. Uh, these sandboxes essentially are implemented on top of Happy Fire, um, a free Java-based implementation of uh, reference implementation of Fire. So whenever you create a sandbox, we spin up for you an instance of Happy Fire. Uh, we set up a database underneath, and then we, we help you populate this sandbox with uh, patient data, users, apps, personas, etc. And we encapsulate the whole thing with tools and services to help you manage this sandbox. So there is EHR simula simulator, scenario builder, data manager, etc. Also terminology server and an OAuth server. For Smart on Fire, you need OAuth for authentication authorization, um, a profile of OAuth 2 to be more specific. So this helps us with uh, providing OAuth protection to the Fire endpoints so that you can run Smart on Fire applications. Okay, so. A sandbox, so I assume most of you are familiar with the concept, it's a fully functional fire server, uh, data manager, app launcher, its intent is to be vendor neutral, um, a ref a faithful reference implementation of a fire, which, which means it, it comes as close as it gets to the actual standard. Um, you see, fine, there are some differences between, of course, a reference implementation and epic certain role scripts. But always, I think, it, at least in my opinion, it's a good idea to start with the reference implementation when you're developing your application, get it working against the reference implementation, and then start working through the idiosyncrasies of the different vendors and connecting your application. 
Um, also worth mentioning that the sandbox is not appropriate for production use, so don't even think, think about it. No PHI uh, is supported. Uh, there is no HIPAA support. Uh, uh, if you're based in the US, uh, that's the regulation for patient uh, privacy uh, protections, so to speak. And uh, there is no SOA and such. So use it at your own risk, pretty much. Um, but do not put any, uh, any protected data on the platform. Okay, so to get on the same page, here are a couple concepts that you want to be aware of when you first start with the, H with the Logica Health Sandbox. The Sandbox user, that would, be, that would be you. So when you set up an account with Logica Health, um, you become a Sandbox user. Um, the persona, a persona, is actually a fi fictional user. So you can create as many of those for your Sandbox as you like. And it's, uh, it's a user which is only used for context. When you launch an application, uh, when you run a CDS service and you need to provide context, so you need to tell the application who is running the application, it's really the persona. And you can create as many of those as you like and create test scenarios around that. So the sandbox user is, uh, that would be you. The persona is the, are the fictional users within, H within HSPC Logica Health. Um, and then we have a launch scenario within the sandbox, which is um, a repeatable launch context that you can use for testing. And you can configure a specific context for your application, then you can launch your application over and over again for testing purposes. And you can create many of those scenarios to help you in your uh, development endeavors and your testing. Okay, so at this point, I'm going, we're going to switch gears and take a look at the sandbox. Um, just to check, this presentation goes until, until 9.45, correct? Okay, thank you. 9.40. 9.40, okay. So we have just about half an hour, slightly less. Okay. So the sandbox, I'm going to sign out here. The sandbox is located on sandbox.hspcconsortium.org and that will soon redirect to Logica Health's new domain. Um, so it will be in the link in the slides, so don't worry if you don't remember that one, it's not critical. When you first go to the sandbox, you are going to encounter a login screen, and you can log in either with a Google account or you can create a traditional um, email password tuple to authenticate, whichever serves you better. So I'm going to uh, use my Google account to log in. <coughs> okay, here we go. So um, when you first start um, set up your sandbox, the only um, the only sandbox that you're going to see is this HSPC consortium SU3. These are just some things I was testing yesterday and I forgot to clean up. So you only have this one right here when you first log in. This is a special sandbox which contains a set of sample patients, maybe a couple hundred, which, um, which are based on demographics from the state of Massachusetts. And it's, it's just a set of sample patients that you can use for testing and maybe running an up medical applications against to see what you can, if you can find something interesting amongst those patients. Most likely than not, you, what you're going to want to do is set up a new sandbox, which you click on the new sandbox and then there is a form. Is this small? I can make it a little bigger. Does that help? Okay, okay so we're going to name, to, to name our sandbox. So how about Dev Days 2019? Okay, then an ID is generated for our sandbox. And then we have to pick a fire version for our sandbox um, amongst the supported versions. So for this demo, I'm going to go with um, STU3, which is a popular version of fire but you can also go with uh, DSTU2 or R4. Um, the three settings next that you need to be aware of, allow open fire endpoint will enable an unprotected endpoint for your sandbox. I do not recommend that because uh, that's, uh, this endpoint will not be protected by OAT. Anybody will be able to hit it. Um, it's just not a good practice at all. However, if you just want a simple sandbox, fire sandbox, and you just want an endpoint that you can 
hit it fr from your favorite REST client and not worry about OAuth just initially, you may want to enable it. Uh, then you can, you can either leave your sandbox empty when you first start it, or on the other hand, you may initialize it with some sample patients and sample applications. I'll go with the default option of initializing the sandbox with some sample data. Oh, this sandbox already exists, interesting. So we'll name it somehow, someplace else, Dev Days, Amsterdam. <coughs> All right, that should work. Okay, interesting. I've seen this error once before when lots of people were hitting the sandbox at the same time. Uh, so apparently we are not so bulletproof as we wanted to be. So if, if, if I could ask you if you're creating sandboxes to just hold for, for just a second so that we can, we can get the demo one here. It's embarrassing as it is, so sorry. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. Ah, the live demos. Okay, this looks a little better. So in just a few short moments, if everything goes as planned, you have your, your brand new sandbox on your screen. Um, and, okay, we're making progress. Great, great, great. So, um, the first thing that you're going to see in your, in your sandbox is this apps screen. And because I requested importing sample applications, I'll have a couple of those here. However, for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, I'm going to draw your attention to the patients screen right here. Um, so here is where you're going to see all the patients into your sandbox. And these are the 60 or so sample patients that uh, come with uh, with uh, Logica Health, the sandboxes. Those are mostly based on the smartphone fire sample patients with a few, um, a few additions. So you can browse through those. If you click on one of the sample patients, such as this, you're going to get a um, histogram, a graph, you're going to get a graph of um, the distribution of the various fire resources um, on the sandbox, just to give you a very rough idea about what we might be dealing with uh, for this particular patient. Um, so we have the name of the patient, the identifier, the cal calculated age of the patient as of today, date of birth. There is this pencil icon, and if you wonder what the pencil icon is all about, it's actually a fire editor. It's a, it's a smartphone fire application which plays the role of a fire um, data editor. It's fairly simple one, so don't expect a whole lot for it, uh, but for what it's worth, it will give you some tools to be managing the data um, within your patients. So I'm going to authorize the application real quick just to show you uh, what I'm talking about right here. So this is uh, the patient data ma manager, PDM. And um, for example, if I go under the observations, I will see the various um, observations for the patient. Here is the, the weight of the patient. And then I can go and edit the data for this patient. I can create additional entries, clone them, uh, create additional resources. So it has a good set of basic functionality, but it won't do everything under the sky either. Um, but it's there for you to use as you find suitable. Um, you can apply filters, so we can filter, for example, uh, we can say males age 32 to uh, 54. Let's see if this uh, turns back any uh, results. Okay, so these four patients match my, my uh, search criteria for example. And then creating a new patient, or I can search by name. Sometimes, uh, for example, I might have a sample patient, and I know we have this Billy Baby sample patient, so I can kind of very quickly search by the name of the patient. Um, and creating a new patient, if I need just some um, basic patients, is I have this form through which I can create um, test patients, for example, test patient. Um, there we go, and now I have my test patient somewhere down the list. Okay, so this is the patient screen. The practitioner screen is fairly similar. Here is where you've got your medical personnel 
in, a, in your virtual hospital, in your sandbox. So I already have this sample um, practitioner, um, John Smith. I can create additional practitioners. So for example, we can create Dr. Who. And, and we can populate the practitioners. Okay, the persona screen is, remember the fictitious users uh, in HSPC? This is where you can see and create your personas, your fictional users. We already have one here, we can create additional ones. A persona would be either a practitioner or a patient. Actually, the first icon is the patient, the second one is the practitioner. So I already have a practitioner, how about if we create a patient persona? And we'll pick the first patient here for convenience. So let's create this uh, new persona. Okay, so now I have a second persona that I can, I can choose between those two personas when I launch the application and then let the application know uh, who is launching the application. Okay, very good. So under registered apps is where you're going to find um, the applications that um, you have in your sandbox. By default, we have a couple of different applications. So the Billy Rubin risk chart is a classical application that you can use for testing. So let's launch that real quick. So if I click on the launch, that will bring a screen where I can select um, a persona, first of all, who is launching the application, and then one of the sample patients which are pertinent to this application. So I'll pick Billy Baby. So when the application launches, it's going to go through the Smart on Fire authorization process. So in, in this particular implementation, we have uh, an OAuth server, which is based on OpenID Connect, which is an open source um, OAuth server, which is uh, developed at Mitre and is currently residing at, uh, at MIT. Um, and this server is going to ask the user to authorize the application. Here is what the application has asked us, what kind of permissions the application needs, and then we can grant the authorization for a specific period of time. In this case, I'll just leave it by the default to grant the, to do the grant only once until next time. And then once we authorize, um, the control goes back to the application and the, now the application can, can, can go ahead with its business and obtain an access token and then start, start hitting the fire server with requests to get some actionable data and do what the application is, uh, is good at. So this particular application visualizes the bilirubin levels in a newborn and then um, creates also a table with uh, charts the, the data. So fairly simple application used at Intermount in healthcare. Okay, so there are additional ways in which we can launch our application. There is, um, there is this tool called EHR Simulator. So EHR Simulator, I'm going to again use uh, Billy Baby, and then select the John Smith practitioner. It's just like the name suggests, it's a simulation of an EHR environment. So this will remind you of maybe Epic Cerner or neither, who knows, but it's supposed to be, to look like an EHR environment. And uh, on the left, on the top hand side, we have our uh, patient banner. And then on the left hand side, we have um, our, we have our um, sample applications. And here I'm going to launch the Billy Rubin risk chart application with Billy Baby. And this will again run us through the authorization screen, authorize, of course. I always wondered what would happen if I deny the authorization of the application. Never really done it, but it's an option. Um, and there we go. So now the application is actually running inside an iframe embedded inside this mock EHR, very similar to what you see when the application is embedded inside your uh, favorite EHR system. Maybe it won't be quite an iframe, maybe it will be an active X control running a web browser or something similar, but it technically should act something like that and you can check your application. And notice that this application is somewhat smart because it realizes that it's, we are running it inside an EHR uh, user interface, so it won't duplicate, duplicate the patient banner. In the previous screen, 
when I launched the application in its own window, it actually had its own patient banner. You probably didn't notice, but it did have it. But now when it's embedded, it does not have the patient banner. There is actually a queue, um, uh, a flag which the application gets through Smart on Fire, which queues it that whether it's launched inside or outside of an EHR user interface, and the application may or may not react to this. So this one reacts in this particular way. And you can test for that using, um, for example, EHR simulator. The newest, the newest version of EHR simulator, which is not yet in production, has additional features. It has uh, CDS hooks uh, in it, and actually that might be working, so I'll try it in just a moment if we have the time for it. Um, okay, moving forward. Uh, CDS hooks. So your sandbox also supports clinical decision support hooks. Um, so without spending much time into, um, into diving deeper in CDS hooks, these are essentially external uh, clinical decision support services external to your sandbox, which, um, which uh, live out in the cloud, and whenever events uh, happen within your sandbox called hooks, um, these services are listening, and your EHR system can hit the service with some data request. The service can do some data crunching and respond back with, an, with a card, and the card is something that can be rendered on the screen one way or another. Anyways, that's a super short explanation of CDS hooks. So, first thing first, we need to register some hooks. Uh, we need to know the, um, the service URL of our services, and here we have an example, which is actually working, so I'm just going to copy the example, and it's, it's actually a Billy Rubin uh, clinical decision support service. So, when I, when I hit load, um, your sandbox is going to introspect this um, this service, the service has some manifests that it, uh, it will expose to your sandbox, which define the endpoints that the service is supporting and the data requirements of those and some other useful things. And now we, your sandbox is populated with these CDS hooks. And for example, we have the Billy Rubin sample suggestion card. So if we click launch, um, give it some context. Um, so. Let's pick one here. There we go. The service actually ran and came back with, with an app card, which is rendered on, on screen. It's, it uh, suggests um, ordering a Billy Rubin lab for this patient. The raw version of this, uh, so the request, what we actually, the CDS, what our sandbox hit the service with is right in here, and that contains uh, a number of data points. The response, more interestingly, what our service came back with in JSON format is right in here. And you see that um, the card, um, right here, that's the card. It's actually in mark, markdown. And that's, that's what gets returned and then gets rendered by the, um, by the EHR system. That's roughly the mechanism how CDS hooks work. So you, we also support CDS hooks. Okay. But so you say, too many steps here. Every time I launch CDS hook or an application, I need to select practitioner and uh, patients and so forth, and that just gets tiring very quickly. All right, launch scenarios to the rescue. Under launch scenarios, you can actually create repeatable uh, test cases for your applications or CDS hooks. Let's do one here for, um, let's say, the CDS hook. So um, I'm going to pick up my uh, CDS hook, the Billy Rubin, I will just run. We're going to pick up the persona for our hook. So uh, let's pick up uh, John Smith, the practitioner. And then, um, and then we're going to select a patient. And we want Billy Baby. He's always a good patient for this particular application. Uh, we'll leave the counter ID blank. And we are finally on a summary screen, which gives us um, a summary of everything we did and also generates a, a suggested name for our launch scenario, which we can go with or we can change it uh, if we feel creative or have a special need. So I'm going to save. And now I should we should have a new launch scenario right here. The first launch scenario is what we just created with the CDS service, and we can, we can launch the launch scenario. And 
There we go. So now the service runs with the context that we defined, and we get the app cart. And we can run this over and over and over again as we are refining our CDS service or Smart on Fire application. You can have any number of those launch scenarios in here, and the list, believe me, will get very long very soon. So um, there are some filters which will help you sort through those uh, launch scenarios as uh, you get more and more of them. For example, we can limit just to the launch scenarios for the Billy Rubin um, application. Speaking of um, application launch scenarios, just want to show you uh, how one of those scenarios might look like. Uh, besides the ability to define custom context, uh, etc., for your scenario, you can control whether the application launches um, in its own browser window, so uh, or within the EHR simulator with this toggle right here. So I can, for example, launch um, launch the Billy, Ru Billy Rubin application standalone in. Um, in full screen. I shouldn't be using the word standalone. Standalone has a special meaning within the smartphone fire world um, of an application which is launched outside of an EHR environment, and this is not the case. But here is, here is my uh, Billy Rubin risk chart. And uh, just like I promised you before, when we launch it outside of a EHR simulator, it has its own patient banner right there. So if you missed it the first time now, you can, you can see it in there. And conversely, if I, if I hit the toggle the other way around and launch, um, I'm going to get the same application launched inside the HR simulator. So I can also create scenarios for that purpose uh, just as well and skip all the pre-configuration steps in there. Okay, so moving on. Um, okay, profiles. So under profiles, um, we, can, um, we can import uh, fire profiles into our sandbox. Uh, right now I don't have anything, so I'm going to go ahead and click on plus, and they, I have a couple options. I can go and download the package and then, and then get point at the file, the, the package which my, with my profile. Um, here under the information icon, we actually have a wiki page, which uh, will give you some guidance into finding some of the common US-based, in this case, profiles. And then you can, you can hunt for the download packages, but it's, it, it will take, may take a little bit of time. You need to be careful if you go that route uh, to make sure that what you're downloading uh, matches the Fire version of your sandbox, because profiles are, of course, Fire version specific just as well. And it will do you no good to try an R4 profile against uh, the SQ3 sandbox, so you need to be very careful and treat exactly what, uh, which version of the profile we were downloading. And to make matters even more complicated, the version numbers of the profiles I've seen do not cor don't correspond with the Fire version numbers, so do not assume that if the profile is version 3, that means it's Fire ST, um, STU3 and such. That may not be the case at all. Um, or you can go the, fa the simpler route, and you can use Simplifier. And uh, here we actually have pre-configured a couple profiles. US Core is a US-based profile. You can do a custom one and, and then hit load, and that's going to go and fetch the profile for, um, for a simplifier and deploy it into your, into your sandbox. And that may take a little bit of time um, just as well. So let's, uh, let me just, let's make sure that it's underway. There we go. So now I have one resource process, two, etc. We'll just let it work on that and come back in just a minute or two when it should be finished. And this particular profile has a lot of um, resources into it. Yes? Um, so the question is, um, the version of the resource that I download, um, is it automatically matched against my sandbox? And the, the answer is actually yes. We, we try to match the, from this list here the version of, of the profile against, against uh, the version of Fire in the sandbox. But, uh, um, but I believe in Simplifier, each project is tied to a particular Fire version, so you also need to read in Simplifier which version of the profile you are looking at when you pick up its identifier. Um, 
Okay, actually, let's go back to the profiles. Maybe, okay, there we go. US core is already loaded. If I click on it, I'm going to see some details about this particular profile. I'll see the, uh, the structure definitions and value sets and code systems. Uh, so the various resources which together compromise the profile. And the profile is actually also a set of fire resources in the fire world. Um, what can I do with the profile? If you go under tools, and the first thing you'll get is validation. So under validation, you can pick, um, and there are different ways in which you can validate. You can validate the resource by just pasting literally the JSON of the resource, or you can um, validate a local file which represents the resource, uh, or you pick a URI within your sandbox. In this case, I'll go the easy route and just browse for some uh, sample data inside my sandbox. I'll pick the first patient here, and uh, in a few short moments, it's actually going to enumerate the various resources which are linked to this particular patient resource. It may take a little while because it's running a number of fire queries on the background. But here, I, here is the, my patient resource. This patient has various conditions, uh, our, allergies, observations, and so forth. And I can uh, try validation on any of those resources. I'll maybe just validate the patient itself in this case. Um, suggested profile is US core. We can go with that. And, and then you'll see the results of the validation. In this case, no issues were detected. The, prof the resource is actually valid. And that's the rendered version of uh, the result. If there were any issues, you'd see boxes in, um, in yellow or red, depending on the severity. Under the JSON tab, you see the raw result of the validator. The validator within your sandbox is actually going to be the one which comes with HAPI, which is based on the, on the H07 uh, Java-based validator. So that's what's running under the hood. So all of this is basically a uh, facade which helps you run uh, validations the easy way instead of having to learn the command line syntax. But that's still available if you'd like, if you're more of a command line person or want to hit the server with, uh, with fire API requests, you can do validations that way. Um, under other tools, um, we have some integrations with third party uh, tools in the fire world, which we find useful. For example, um, we have uh, CleanFire. So if I click on CleanFire, that's uh, going, we're going to get CleanFire launched. And in fact, um, OK, actually, I know what's happening. So sorry, let me backtrack. So CleanFire actually only supports open fire, um, fire uh, endpoints. So in this case, uh, in, for my repository here, for my sandbox, I did not allow any open endpoints, if you remember. So at this point, I'm going to go into the settings and click on the pencil icon and enable the open endpoint. That's going to actually help with uh, clean fire. There we go. So on this screen right here, we have the endpoints for the fire endpoints for our sandbox listed. The protected one, which supports OAT, is the first one listed. And because I just enabled the open one, the second one is the unprotected one. So if I now go back under tools and launch clean fire, OK, there we go. So now we have clean fire, and it's already configured automatically against our, um, our HSPC repository. Um, and under clean fire, you'll find different modules which uh, allow you to do graphs of your patient data, browse through your patient data. It's a, it's a really impressive tool. Uh, we have integrations with uh, Inferno and Crucible, which are testing suites for fire. Um, we have integrations with the CDS hooks harness, you can also run that against your sandbox if you're developing CDS hooks, a number of useful tools. Under data manager, you can run fire queries against your um, sandbox. For example, we can uh, run a patient query to get all the patients of the sandbox. Uh, and here are the results rendered, and you can see them both in raw uh, JSON fire, or we can see the rendered versions, or we can create more elaborate queries, such as, OK, this one is going to return just one result. We can see the, the bundle, the response of the server for, um, for our query. So if there were actually multiple results, the result would be a, a bundle resource, which packages together uh, the answer of the server um, that we are getting back. So we can do it from here. And then we can do um, export and import. So we can export all the data from our sandbox as a bundle. 
or a subset, if we can define this subset as a fire query, and then conversely, we can import data from a bundle um, back into the sandbox, so we can move data around in this way. Uh, finally, I want to show you where you can collaborate under settings and users. This is where you can invite um, invite your collaborators to join your sandbox. So Nikolai at Interopian. Okay, there we go. So I just invited myself to the sandbox and what your collaborator will get an email and then they'll need to confirm and then they'll become members of your sandbox and they'll be able to see your sandbox and and help you out um, with the sandbox. Because we're running out of time, I, I won't be able to show you everything. Just in the, in the top right corner right here, the help icon gives you quick links to various uh, logical health resources. Most importantly, the developers forum. If you know there is one of these that you really need, it's the developers forum. That's where you can go and post questions, look for answers, and, in, and um, um, generally interact with the community around logical health. Um, the chime will show, you, will show you if you have any notifications, you'll see a red circle in there, so if you're invited to new sandboxes, the chime will tell you about that, and then you can manage your profile from uh, the top right corner. So that's a quick overview of the sandbox. I skimmed through a couple parts, uh, there's more details to it than meets the eye, but that just gives you a general overview about what um, to expect with your um, sandbox. So to wrap up the presentation, okay, so currently we have over 3,000 users, um, over 1,300 uh, sandboxes. The key, um, the key URLs that you want to be aware of, the website of Logical Health, the developers portal, and then of course the sandbox lives right in here. Um, if, you, if you need to reach me, my email address is nikuai at interopian.com. Um, at this point, um, I'll be happy to take any questions uh, from the audience. Hope this was uh, useful, useful to you folks and uh, gave you, gave you a, an idea about the, our uh, sandbox platform and help you in your development endeavors. So, thank you. Um, anybody, any, any questions or Yes, please. If you were doing a development <coughs> and you, you're getting weekly data on, can you make use of this uh, continuous integration? Continuous integration, okay. So the question is about can the sandbox be used for continuous integration purposes? Uh, well, let's define continuous integration. My understanding continuous integration is automate testing whenever you make commits into your GitHub repository, right? Is that. Uh, um, so I, I'm trying to envision which scenario you, do, do you have a specific scenario in mind? I, I, I can imagine that starting to build something, you're starting to put exam ports into this and you're doing it very manually, then you move on to- Aha, aha, okay, I read you, I read you, so. Right, so, 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 so maybe, m maybe what you have in mind is I have, um, uh, a repository of sample patients or an application, and whenever I update those, can my Logica sandbox be automatically updated? Um, technically, I think it's feasible. The way I would approach it is because you have a real fire, fire server behind the, behind the scene. That fire server, of course, supports fire, the fire API queries. So um, I would maybe expose an open endpoint, although that's not secure or anything, but that's a quick way to get started and construct a script which, uh, continuous integration script, which whenever my repository changes, runs, <coughs> runs fire queries against this endpoint. And then after that, I would look to securing the endpoint. But that's a rough kind of blueprint of what I would personally do. I've never done it. I just came up with that possible solution. But, um, but in and of itself, the sandbox manager, the user interface I showed you, does not have any hooks or facilities for continuous integration. But you can implement something through fire. I imagine. Okay, well, thank you very much. So we'll continue in about 15 minutes um, after the break with the second part of this uh, presentation.